Hello. In today's practice lab, I will focus on configuring PPP encapsulation on serial links. I'll also configure PPP PAP authentication and PPP CHAP authentication. And before I do these configurations, I will configure the interfaces and configure static and dynamic routes. I hope my videos are helpful for those who are seeking to be certified for the Cisco exams. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and share it on your Facebook page. And if you want to do more labs, visit my page on Facebook as I listed there all the labs I did. Also, there are two playlists listed on my YouTube channel. If you like the videos and find them helpful, please give me a thumb up. And please let me know if you have any suggestions, comments or questions. I will gladly answer you back. On the description of this video, you will find two files, one for the packet tracer source files and the documents to walk you through the lab step by step until you finally will be able to verify the configurations you did during this lab. Now what's the PPP network? In computer networking, point-to-point -point protocol PPP is a data link layer 2 communication protocol between two routers directly connected without any host or any other networking in between. It can provide connection, authentication, transmission, encryption, and compression. Now, what does authentication type PAP mean? Password authentication protocol PAP is a password Base authentication protocol used by point-to-point -point protocol to validate users. Almost all network operating system remote servers support PAP. Among PAP, PAP's uh, deficiencies is the fact that it uh, transmits unencrypted passwords in plain text over the network. Now, Password Authentication Protocol, PAP, and Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol, CHAP, are both used to authenticate PPP sessions and can be used with many VPNs. Basically, PAP works like an, a standard login procedure. The remote system authenticates itself to the using a static username and password combination. Now, I will configure uh, the routers. Start with router 1, enable, configure, terminal, hostname, router 1. Now I will configure the interface on gig 00, and this is with the IP address of 172.16.10.1 with slash 24 subnet mask. I will enable the port with a notion command. The interface serial 000, this is with the IP address of 10.1.1.1 with slash 30 submit mask. I'll activate the port with a no shut. Now I will do router 2, enable, configure terminal, hostname here, router 2. Now on the interface facing uh, uh, router 1 on serial 000. This is with the IP address of 10.1.1.2 with slash 30 subnet mask and a no shot. Now the interface on the serial 001 facing router 3. This is with IP address of 10.2.2.1 slash 30 subnet mask. And enable the port with no shut. And then the interface facing the ISP router on serial 010. Zero. This is with IP address of 209.165.200.1 slash 30 subnet mask. No shut. Now on router 3. Enable, configure, terminal, hostname, router 3. 
Now the interface of gig zero is zero. The LAN on router three with the IP address of 172.16.30.1 slash 24 subnet mask. Enable the port with a no shot. Now the interface of serial zero zero one facing uh, router two. This is with the IP address of 10.2.2.2 slash 30 subnet mask. Enable the port with a no shut command. Now, I will be working on the internet router, the ISP router. I click on the route on uh, the internet cloud icon. And here, enable configure terminal hostname ISP. Now, the interface facing the web server on gig zero zero. This is with the IP address of 8.8.8.1 slash 30 subnet mask. Enable the port with a no shut. And then the interface facing router 2 on serial 000. This is with IP address of 209. 165.200.2 slash 30 subnet mask and activate the port with a no shut command here when you click click on this the back to go back here and what I simply did when I configured the ISP router I just clicked here it took me here and to go back just click on this back so now I configure the interfaces on this topology. Next, I will configure a static and dynamic routes in the topology. I will configure EIGRP on the routers with autonomous system one. So now I'll start with router one. From the global configuration mode in uh, Conf T, now router EIGRP autonomous system one. Now I will Advertise for a network of 172.10.0, the LAN here, this network. And this is with the adverse subnet mask of 000, 000 And the other network of 10.1.1.0 with the adverse subnet mask of 0003. Now, the passive interface in this topology, or for uh, or router 1, passive on the gig 0, 0 for the LAN. Now, on router 2, from the global configuration, uh, router EIDRP, autonomous system 1. Now, for the network, Facing router 1 on 10.1.1.0 with the inverse subnet mask of 00.3. And now, as you can see, uh, we have a new adjacency and the other network of, sorry about that, the network of 10.2.2.0, the, the serial link with the uh, router 3, the inverse subnet mask of 00.3. And uh, the network of 209, the network uh, facing the ISP router, Sorry about that. network of 209.165.200.0 with the inverse subnet mask of 00 0.3. Now, the passive interface we want to be the, for this topology, interface facing the internet so on the serial zero one zero and redistribute static now i will configure a static default route to the internet the exit interface would be the interface on the isp router so exit from here and the global configuration mode ip route to any network with this subnet mask and our exit interface it on the 209.165.200.2 this is our exit interface here 
and then hit enter. Now on router three, on global configuration mode, router, EIGRP, autonomous system one, for the two network of the 10.2.2.0 with the inverse subnet mask of 0 0.3 and the other network on the LAN of 172.16 the theory that 0 with the inverse subnet mask of 0 0 0 0.0.255 and the passive interface on the gig 0 0 now on the ISP router as I said, come, simply click on the cloud here, and then on the ISP router, on the global configuration. Here on the, uh, the ISP router, I will configure only the static default type. So IP route to any network with this subnet mask and the exit interface on the 0000. Next, I will click here just the back arrow and it takes us back to the topology. Next I will uh, test connectivity between the computers and the web server. So from PCA I will try to ping the web server here. Ping 8.8.8.2 And it is successful so we have connectivity and we can reach the web server from PCA and I'll try also on PCC 8.8.8.2 and it was also successful next <clears throat> what I did so far configured the interfaces on the routers and configured the dynamic routing protocol ERGRP on the routers and the static route on uh, router 2 reach the internet as from the ISP router for the the topology or our network <clears throat> so now I will configure PPP as the encapsulation method also I will configure router 1 to use PPP encapsulation with router 2 on the serial link now on router 1 exit from the global configuration mode now on the interface of serial 0 0 0 the serial link with router 2 simply encapsulation we want to use PPP, uh, PPP. Enter. as you can see the adjacency now it went down why because this is configured with PPP and this is we still did not configure it so supposed to come up now when we do the configuration on router 2 and as you can see here also it went down uh, router 2 the interface on serial 0 0 0 serial link connected to uh, uh, before I do this I want to do router 3 so I did this with router 2 and I'll do router 3 with router 2 so on router 3 exit simply on the serial 0 0 1 encapsulation PPP and then hit enter and as you can see the same what happened on router 1 it went down it's still down here and the same here with router 3 until we configure router 2 the connection will remain down so now I will configure router 2 to use PPP encapsulation with router 1 and with router uh, 3 and also with the ISP router on the internet so on router 2 on the global configuration I'll exit from here so now on the global configuration mode 
Now, the serial neck between router 2 and router 1, the interface of serial 000, zero, zero uh, encapsulation PPP, and hit enter. As you can notice now, it went up. Now, we did this serial link here, so now we will do the serial link here between router 2 and router 3. Uh, the interface of serial 001 encapsulation PPP and notice now it came back up the adjacency and it is up now it's time to do router 2 with uh, the ISP router <coughs> so here from the global configuration mode uh, the interface of serial 010 the serial link with the uh, internet encapsulation PPP enter now it went down here the connection between router 2 and the ISP because we still need also to configure the ISP next I will configure ISP to use PPP encapsulation with router 2 we did between router 2 and the ISP but now it is time to do it from the ISP to router 2 and as you can see the link is down so from the global configuration and we will do on the interface of serial 000 simply type encapsulation PPP here it is down now when I hit enter it came back up next I'll check uh, now, after I'm done here, just simply click this black arrow. After I'm done with this uh, configuration, configuring point-to-point uh, -point protocol between the routers, let's us check connectivity from the PCs to the web server. So now back to PCA, upper arrow to uh, ping the web server, and we have connectivity. And from PCC, I'll do the same upper arrow on the keyboard and just hit enter so it sends a ping to the web server next I will configure PPP PAP authentication between router 1 and router 2 I will create a user and use a secret password to provide a thorough encryption so on router 1 from the global configuration mode uh, user name on router 1 it, it will be router 2 and secret I'll use in this example CCNA so now I configured a username with a secret password now on the interface of serial 00, zero PPP authentication use app now PPP app sent user name router1 the local on router1 and this is with a password of ccna hit enter i configured it here on router1 let me also do it on router2 the same configuration from the global configuration mode uh, first create the user name now we are configuring on router 1 so the username will be router 1 and with a secret password of CCNA now on the interface of serial 000 facing router 1 do the configuration PPP authentication use app it went down now PPP app Sent username router2 the local uh, router2 and with a password of CCNA. Next, I will configure PPP PAP authentication. Now I'm done configuring PAP between router1 and router2. Now I'll do it between router2 and router3. So router 2 
on the global configuration mode the username I'm configuring router 2 here the username would be router 3 to the secret of CC and uh, CC and A now on the interface of serial 001 the serial link between router 2 and router 3 EPP authentication use tap now EPP tap sent username of router 2 because we are working on router 2 with a password of CCNA now the link between router 2 and router 3 I did the on router 2 now I'll work on router 3 on the global configuration mode on router 3 first I'll create a user name router 2 with a secret of CCNA now on the interface of serial 001 the serial link connected router 3 with router 2 TPP authentication use app TPP app sent user name router 3 with the password of CCNA enter Next, I will configure PPP CHAP authentication between router 2 and the ISP router. I'll use CHAP. Between router 1 and router 2, we use PAP. Between router 3 and router 2, we use PAP. Between router 2, 3, PAP. Router 2 and 1, PAP. Now, between router 2 and the ISP router here on the internet, I'm gonna use chat so I'll start on the ISP router from the global configuration mode exit here global configuration mode now username create the username which is router 2 with a secret of CCNA now on the interface of serial 000 which is connected to the to router 2 EPP authentication in this example we will use chat enter now as you can see it went down so I'll click back and as I work on the ISP router I'll do the work here on router 2 on the global configuration mode on router 2 first create the username of ISP with a secret of CCNA now on the interface of serial 0 1 uh, 0 on uh, router 2 which is connecting the router 2 with the ISP router uh, EPP authentication here we will use chat just like what we did with the ISP now I will test the connectivity between the PCs and the web server so from PCA the upper arrow on the keyboard and it is unreachable why because here it's done. I'll give it a second till we see it will notify us that we have the efficiency and it went up here on router 2 and the same here on the ISP. Now this is went up on the ISP for CHAP configuration. Now let's see if it did anything on router 2 and as you can see it went up. So now if I run the ping here it's, it showed us it is unreachable but if I run it again it must go through and it did and I'll test it also on PCC the upper arrow to ping the web server and hit enter and we have connectivity this indicates that our work in this uh, lab is perfect and everything is okay Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something here from this uh, lab. 
you can uh, download the packet tracers uh, source files uh, and also the walk you through the walk you through documents and it will work walk you step by step until everything is uh, done as i showed you in this uh, lab you can run also some show uh, commands on the routers and study them carefully you know just to play with it you know until you and if you have any comments, suggestions, please let me know and I'll help you with it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in my next video. Have a nice day.